Hello and welcome back as always to This Week in Gwent, our weekly show in which we talk everything Gwent, but more importantly, we have guests in Gwent uh, and This Week in Gwent. And today we have Emil, right? I got, to, I got it right. Yes, you got it right. Yes, good. Because <laughs> when it comes to pronouncing names, I, I hate when I make a mistake because I called you Emily once and I was like, oh my, oh my, and you, and you said like, Yo, I think you wrote in chat during one opens, like you mispronounced it. I was like, oh no, because I have this thing. It's, it's a stigma. Um, cause when I was growing up in the States, um, and going to school there, since my name is Pavel, they, they pronounced it in like, it was like Pavel, Pavel. Paul, it was like all the weird stuff that you can, and I was just like, no, just, just, just say this or just say Paul. If it's like in English, like you can, you can go that way. So, so yeah. Um, whenever I make a mistake now, I'm like, eh, you yeah, remember, you know, remember you, they messed up your name. You, so, yeah. So how do I actually pronounce your name? So it would be Pavel mm -hmm. with a wit at the end, which is a weird, um, weird kind of sound, but it's, it's, it's the L with the, with the thing on the cross on it. So it's, it's, it's win. So, yeah. Yeah. But enough yeah. about me. Um, <laughs> more importantly, um, thank you for taking the time. I know it's, uh, it's midnight in, in Australia cause you're Australia, you're Australia based. If I remember correctly. Yes, I am. And I'm in Melbourne. So it is 12 or 2 a.m. So it is technically Saturday for me. So oh, this week man. in Gwent on a Saturday. <laughs> nice. Okay. We have transcended time and moved on from, from, from Friday to Saturday. That's, that's even that's even better. That's first time ever on, on Twig. Never happened. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was I was we were chatting before we went live. It's incredible how many people from different places of the world are there playing Gwent. It's just incredible. So whenever we have someone from, from a different region, I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's so cool. Cause we're, we're normally used to everybody being mainly like Europe based, some people from the States, but Australia is, is, is something totally new. So yeah, I would, yeah, I wouldn't say, uh, I mean, there is a bit of a small ish Gwent community in Australia. There's a few Australians there, you know, team Creeves and yeah. I mean, they're a, they started as like an Oceana team mm -hmm. flow is um australian but not a lot of australians that i know of play gwent yeah that's that's true that's true um i don't have much in terms of news for this week in gwent the only thing that i have is uh, the humble bundle has been extended by seven days so uh if you want um if you want to get on this there is a there is a nice bundle called the deck builder bundle which we're part of and you get an ultimate starter pack, part of this bundle. And apart from that, there's um, other games that are that are within this bundle. So um, yeah, seven more days to get it for those that missed it. Uh, I also added it to the end game news. So it's in the, uh, it's in the game. So totally check it out. Yeah, that's, that's, that's easy clap. Okay, Emil, about you. How did you discover Gwent? Because that's my that's my number one question always. Like, where 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 did this come from, and why streaming Gwent? Okay, uh, I'll start off with the first part of the question. Mm -hmm. So I discovered Gwent through The Witcher Three, like a lot of people did, but I didn't actually play Witcher Three until December twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. So I I was a gamer as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved playing video games. I had a PlayStation Game Boy nice. and I loved playing it, even though my parents didn't like me playing it. I played it a lot. <laughs> Same <laughs> uh, here. But then I, yeah, they just, they were like, why are you playing video games? <laughs> and then uh, when I became an adult, I guess it was like, okay, time to put these away. And then I didn't own a console. I wasn't into video games. Um, and then I got back into video games because of the pandemic. So, mm -hmm. uh you know, I th it started with The Sims, actually. Okay. Uh, I played The Sims as a kid, and then I saw there was a Sims 3, and then I was hooked on video games again. Because I, I don't know if you heard, but Melbourne was in a lot of lockdowns. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think we had six in total. Uh, so Wow, that's a then, lot. Then, yes, I think by the last lockdown, I think that was a three-month lockdown, and uh, that's I started... So I started playing Gwent, I think, after I had finished The Witcher 3, because mm -hmm. I was kind of like... What do I do now? I feel like my life's empty without The Witcher 3. I think a lot of people have that feeling when they finish The Witcher 3. I definitely did. And I felt that my life was missing something. I didn't know what it was, but it was missing something. 
And mind you, I've never played card games before. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I didn't even play Gwent in the first playthrough, admittedly. Same, <laughs> I just same. I did not it. play Gwent in The Witcher 3, like, totally. I've always been into card games, but I never played Gwent in, in, in The Witcher 3. I played yeah. it just to kind of check it out in the beginning, yeah, but then I was like, no, I'll just focus on the main story because that's, that's kind of my objective for the game, right? Same. So I was just focused on the story. I was, I was like, what's going to happen? I didn't even realize there was multiple endings. I had a feeling because... You know, you had choices, but mm-hmm. I didn't realize, you know, I didn't look up anything. So I had no idea what I was going into. And then, um, yeah, so I played it the second time because I was like, oh, I want to play this again, but on Death March. And then I thought, oh, I'll try. I'll try Gwent. Um, gave it a shot. And I was like, oh, this is actually a cool little mini game within the game. Um, but I think there was a little flyer because I played on my PS4 and there mm-hmm. was a little flyer in the, uh, what do you call that, that disc? holder yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i think it had the gwent flyer yeah so i kind of was like oh okay there must be a standalone game then mind you this is 2020 so i'm like you know really late to the party yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah i started pl- i think i downloaded it i saw it as a, an app so i thought oh it's just something you play on your mobile when you're bored right so i was like oh, i'll just download it and i downloaded the app and um yeah, then I started playing and I'm competitive by nature. So <laughs> I just was like, oh, I, I want to I wanna win games. Um, and then I started to, I think it was the meta when Vi was meta. Mm-hmm. And I think I got stuck at like rank seven, I think. I didn't <laughs> even know what the ranks were for like a yeah. good three months because I was like, what are those numbers in the left hand corner? Yeah. And then so I Googled <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it meant, so yeah. I Googled it. I was like, oh, there's actually rankings and I'm actually playing against real people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, then kind of just went from there and I was Googling, okay, how do I beat Vi deck? You know, mm-hmm. like I just had no idea how I could beat it. And that's how I came across the community. So I saw, you know, Reddit threads. Uh, I didn't know what Twitch was still. At the okay. time. <laughs> I'm such a boomer, but I didn't know what Twitch was. And, um, and why did I start streaming? I don't know. I think I'm hard <laughs> stuck at rank seven. And I was like, I want to be good at this game. I want to get to, you know, I was like, I want to get to pro rank, the elusive pro rank. How do I get there? Yeah. And I'd see the top players and I'm like, who are these top people? <laughs> so, um, I wanted to be good. So, uh, I think I started streaming cause I had a cam and I was so bored and locked out. Like, you know, I had, by then yeah. I'd done, made like all this banana breads and cooked a lot. And I was just like, I've done everything you can in lockdown. I might as well stream on Twitch. Why not? What have I got to lose really? Um, And here we are today. And I absolutely love the path that I've taken. I can't believe how much it's changed my life. Uh, Gwen's really changed my life. I really do enjoy playing the game. Um, And it's something I do play every day. Uh, I stream it almost every day. Uh, I've met so many people. None of my close girlfriends play games so they have every time i talk about it they have no idea what i'm talking yeah. about but it's just something that's yeah completely changed my life so i'm very grateful that i've you know come across the witcher universe and the community so that's incredible like um i i i totally relate with like being a gamer and then having this thing i also like before i joined cdpr i was like what is this like twitch thing what are people like streaming really they're like just in front of a camera talking and it's also like one thing to kind of shift to the whole thing and 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 entertain people through a stream. Like, is this something that you need to be comfortable with? And um, I remember, yeah, like like my first streams were like just 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 horrible because you don't know like what to do and like in the like how to interact with people. Like, what should I be saying? Should I be talking about every play that I do? But yeah, like more and more people like once they start tuning in, they start like like asking you questions. Uh, some of them maybe are more experienced, so they kind of uh you know so they they kind of tell you like oh how how maybe you can play this in a different way or maybe you can try this or try this deck or i'm playing this do you want to play it on stream so like you start building like this community around yourself which is really cool but you also become more ingrained into the existing community that you have for for gwent yeah but i think also yeah the, the pandemic kind of opened up uh, the streaming platform because, like you said, a lot of people were just sitting at home on lockdown 
And for me, like I, I was missing this social aspect of getting to interact with others. So it was a good time to, to, you know, since you can't go out of your home pretty much, so you're, you're stuck there. So the only way that you can interact with other people is by streaming because they will come to your chat and you will talk to them and, you know, you get to know them and the whole thing kind of starts developing. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And uh, when I started streaming, as I mentioned, I was hard stuck at rank seven. And then within one week of streaming, I in pro rank. So <laughs> thanks to the community <laughs> and all the backseating and all the tips that I got, yeah. you know, because I, I was uh, not net decking. I didn't even know what net decking was. <laughs> I was just making some of my own home brews and people were writing in chat like, oh, where'd you get this deck from? That's And people were so polite. And they were like, that's an interesting deck. Uh, so I had made suggest this and I was like, oh, I've been playing wrong the entire time. That's why I can't rank up. <laughs> yeah, really, really cool. So you said you, you played uh, The Witcher 3. Um, we talked a little bit uh, about this off, uh, off stream. Um, so you played Blood and Wine and then you played Hearts of Stone. So the other way around. And I think yeah. we both agreed also that Blood and Wine was your favorite one. Why do you think that one was your favorite one? That's the one I always ask about. <laughs> I think because uh, if you're comparing the two DLCs, for me, and anyway, I'm not sure if this is actually true, but for me anyway, the Blood and Wine expansion felt much larger than the Hearts of Stone. Mm -hmm. That and also because it was so different visually. You yeah. know, you had... Uh, to song looking very yeah. like a Disney kind of feel. And even though it doesn't, cause the Witcher it's, you know, from what I knew from the, the main game and the stone is quite dark and yeah. even visually it was yeah. dark, but then that contrast, you, there was still darkness in a world like Tucson, but I just loved it. Cause it was so visually stunning. Like I, I was just like, you know what? It's a nice change. Yeah. The whole time it's been dark and it's gloomy, especially if you came from Bel. You know, I remember it's leaving a Velen. Fresh air for sure. <laughs> yeah, I remember leaving Velen and getting to Novigrad. I was like, "Oh my goodness, I can't believe how depressing that place was." Yeah, yeah. Velen was supposed Sorry. to be depressing because it was, it was like, it was supposed to be kind of like a no no man's land kind of. Plus, you had the bogs there, and you had uh, like um, you know Weaver's Whispers and all the all the other witches there, and all that, and the curse. So. It wasn't supposed to be like a happy, happy place. Um, and also, like, I, I really was happy when I left Velen and moved to Novigrad. I was like, oh, this is, you know, bustling city, a lot going on. But then, okay, like, once you're in the city, you kind of see, like, there's a lot of shady stuff going on. There's, like, these uh, crime syndicates fighting for power. There's uh, Radovid is there. You, ha you also have Dijkstra there. And kind of this whole political scene is happening in the background. So there was just, like, a lot to take in and still was very gritty. But, yeah, when, when you get to Tucson and even when you start the quest in the beginning where you have, like, Palmerin and the other uh, knight, they come and they have this, like, scroll and they read it out. Uh, Anna Henrietta, like, is you know, asking you to come to to Son and, and that already is something something different. So so the knights and their chivalry is, is is also an awesome aspect. But yeah, like you said, it was supposed to be a mix of a little bit of like um Italy, Spain mixed in with uh southern France. So it was a nice nice combo in terms of the visuals. And yeah. Also, by that time um in the studio like our technical capab capabilities were like much much better in terms of like doing uh, a little bit better visuals than than what we had in the in the base game. Yeah, it was it was visually stunning. I enjoyed playing it very much, um, and I would I would love. To, I don't know if you'll know, but I'd love to play the um, the enhanced version yeah. when it comes out. I, to be honest, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I have the it. same thing. I'm I'm just waiting for for the next gen version. So once that is out, I I want to replay the whole game again. Because mm -hmm. I, I replay Blood and Wine from time to time because I really like I really love Regis. So I try to do it and every like once or two years. I try to go back and play Blood and Wine. And mm -hmm. for for the base game, I only played it back in 2015 when the game came out. So it would be nice to kind of refresh it now and play it again, especially that I played it back then on PS4. Like to play it now on PC with the new visuals would be would be amazing. Me too. So I'm looking forward. I'm. 
I mean, they said it was going to be this year, so I'm still yeah, yeah. waiting patiently for the announcement. Yeah. That's the that's the plan to have it out uh, end of this year, sometimes in, in in Q4, as far as I remember correctly. But yeah, Ooh. also excited, also excited for that uh, to happen. Did you have a favorite character in The Witcher Three or in one of the expansions? Oh, that's a hard question because I feel that each character really brought something to the table, mm-hmm. even if they had a you know a minor role. Geralt's always been a favorite of mine. I <laughs> I don't know. I just I guess because he's you know he's kind of a hero within the yeah. story. But yeah, it's if you had to ask me who my favorite is, I don't really have a favorite. I think in Gwen's my favorite card would be. I, I, maybe I've skipped ahead here with your questions, but <laughs> um, maybe with Gwen's, I think my favorite character would be uh, Queen Meath because she's just got a, a, a beautiful card. I wish they would you know make her playable though competitively. She's but, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she's got the best artwork, I'd say, in Gwent. Yeah, yeah, and also her character in Thronebreaker, like, she's, she's like, one badass person. She, yeah, yeah, and, and also... I haven't finished it yet, so... <laughs> good, good. Um, Once you do... I'm um, I think I'm halfway. Yeah, her, her story is, is, is really, really cool, so um, highly recommend. And, yeah, it's nice that you also check that out. Did you have a chance to play Rogue Mitch, uh, or or not yet? Are you into roguelikes, or is that not your thing? Because... That's also a kind of a factor that that goes into that. So I did play it the minute I think I was one of the first to play it on stream. Nice. Uh, I downloaded it as soon as it was um, on. I played I played it um, once, and that was the only time I played it. Not because I didn't enjoy it, but because it's competitive season right now, and I'm kind of <laughs> grinding, and there's so much effort that goes into yeah. to climbing. So um, I am trying to to shoot for as high as possible this season. Nice, nice. What's the what's the highest that you ever have gone in terms of like uh, pro ladder? Uh, the highest I placed was a couple of months ago, which was 99. So I just Ooh. made it within. I was gunning for 64, but I just felt sure I, um, yeah. that I remember that last week was quite frustrating for me. I couldn't move my MMR no matter what. So I was disappointed with my result, but um, 99, I was probably proud of because I think early, earlier this year, I made a goal. I was like, I want to make top 500. So nice. cause, uh, yeah, I started playing early last year mm-hmm. and um, I became pro July last year. So um, uh, my goal was like top 500 and then... I was like, okay, maybe top 250, but then I went straight to 99. So I was like, yeah. okay, maybe I can gun for 64. So, and because really um, awesome. I've heard that, I have, I've heard that. Uh, oh, and I can see that you know we don't have any female representation within like collies and yes, Lincoln, so yes, be nice to yes, be exactly. nice to have a female in there. So I know, um, I personally don't know her. I've only heard that the last time you guys had one, I think it was Radu. And, Radu and Andrada, Andrada, yeah. Yeah, that was. So I think that was a couple of years ago now. That was back in the old when we had the old opens and the challengers still. So so it was it was okay. quite a long time ago. It was before the pandemic, but yeah, um, she was the only competitive female player that we had. So it would be really nice to have you know someone to 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 take on the shield and kind of yeah show that uh, yeah. But I <laughs> I'll feel try. Like... I'll try. It's very it's very it's very difficult up there. Honestly, yeah, just the yeah. ladder. It's super super. It's I and you know the thing also. is like. Right. Yeah, and I um the thing is I stream every day too, and um I think it, people don't realize that st- trying to stream and play Gwent, it looks easy, but it's much harder it's than it so looks. It's so hard. Like people don't <laughs> don't even think about that because you're not only you have to be interacting with chat, you also be thinking about how you play, and if you want to get into you know if you want to play like super well, you need to be like super well concentrated and also people you know throwing you off like you, you need to be doing two things at the same time it's it's very hard to focus at least that's that's how it works for me yeah and i uh i take on i'm i'm kind of like a shinmiri disciple i take on the <laughs> rope a lot so <laughs> there's Good. been a lot of misplaces on on stream but uh shinmiri taught me that um if you know roping means that you're thinking about all your options available so yeah Someone yeah. in chat said that Rashid helped him get top 16. <laughs> Rashid uh, helped Rashid, him. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> that, guy, that guy is a character. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it's really cool to see because I feel like you've progressed, like, super quickly from, like, getting to know the basics of the game. Like you said, this is, this is like, the first card game that you interact with, it, right? You haven't played 
anything else when it comes to like CCGs? No magic, no Hearthstone, nothing like that. Nothing, uh, nada. Crazy. I uh, yeah, because as I said, I only, I uh, honestly just thought Gwent was just this fun little app game, you know, the, the Candy Crush sort of candy thing, Candy Crush, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not that I'm just, like, it's just I had no idea. And then when yeah. I started to delve deeper into Gwent, I realized it was an esports scene and I started to watch people on Twitch. My first streamer that I ever watched was Life Coach. I think when yeah. he came back, yeah. um, which was in June, July. And I think there was a World Masters in because the, you guys had delayed it. Yeah. Um, and I saw Shinmiri casting and then I started to Google, okay, what is this eSport thing? And then I saw, you know, um, Jagaris cast and yeah. was, I think I was going way back. And then I was looking at that and I was like, oh, how do I, how do I start playing in these? I was like, oh, I'll never get there. You know, like I'm so <laughs> bad at card games and maths and whatnot. But, um, you know, every season I just... Um, I try to improve and, uh, you know, I, I, I do analyze my plays. I go over mm -hmm. my VODs and I can, I look at like, you know, how could I have done this better? I think about, you know, sometimes it's, there's nothing you can do. It's just the draws that yeah. you have. Your opponent just plays better. But m more often than not, there's something that you could have done better yeah. um, with the hand Agreed. that you're dealt with. So I, I try to look at that and improve. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I do feel that... Um, uh, Gwent is like the game that for me, um, it's, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I love the, the art. Uh, yeah. I love the, I played other card games, but when I look at them visually, it's not for me. Like I've seen Hearthstone. I'm like, I don't know if that's for me. I had the, uh, I had just... the same thing. I had the same thing visually. Plus, uh, like the economy in the game is something that, um, I, I, it was hard for me to get through because, um, like I, I tried to play it back in 2017 and I had the problem of accumulating a good competitive deck it would just take so much time to do it then i was kind of like okay this is not for me plus too much randomness is kind of the other thing that that told me like no this is this is not going to be a game for you so i went pretty much back to playing like magic and then gwent uh because we started developing it yeah yeah so i have i honestly i haven't it could be for me i just haven't tried them mm -hmm. um but i've just yeah i'm you know, still in my phase where I'm really enjoying Gwent as, um, you know, I, otherwise I wouldn't be playing it, um, but I'm enjoying it and seeing, you know, how far I can take it. So, nice. yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. And yeah, when it comes to like updates and, and patches, I know you're you're always there because um, you normally stream um, in the morning. So I, I when I log in for work, I, I kind of lurk and see like that you're always there, like always streaming. And yeah, I remember when there's a, whenever there's an update, you're pretty much just just waiting, and then when um, you know once the update starts like rolling in for the next couple of days, I see that you right now you're like figuring it out the meta like super super quick. So that's that's also really cool to see. Um, yeah, do you have a favorite art in Gwent? Um, speaking of of art, yeah, the probably Queen Maeve, and I'm trying to think of one more that I like. I, there's a there's just too many to choose from, but I think Queen Maeve is probably my favorite because I think it just represents her quite well, yeah. and then you know it's just visually stunning. But uh, the artists have done such a great job. Yeah. So uh, all the all the artwork has has been amazing. Um, I wonder what the next patch will be like because obviously we've had a rent free meta this yeah. season. Um, pet, I know this is not popular opinion. I personally have enjoyed the meta. <laughs> I know well, a lot of people are going to shoot me for saying that. At least someone, <laughs> our chat is going to go crazy. I, don't, no, I just no. don't get what the hate is. I really don't. I mean, I, she is she like, she's powerful. She is a very, she's a very powerful card. So yeah. I can understand why she's included in every single deck. I just like her flexibility. I do think some of her, you know, curses and blessings mm -hmm. are a little bit too powerful, yeah, I'd say. Also because she's a seven point body. Come on, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like other cards that are like a two point body and they have some sort of, you know, big Crazier point slam. But she's a yeah. massive point slam plus she's a seven point body. So, but funnily enough, I have enjoyed this meta compared to, I say, the golden necker arandite meta i really didn't enjoy that one yeah it was, that one i that feel one like was, was worse right it was it was yeah. just basically like people were just going aggressive and that's all you had to do just be super aggressive especially on blue coin make sure your opponent doesn't get any points ahead and then just grow your sword bigger than your opponent and that's yeah. the gg basically yeah 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 i also feel that and i also feel like based on community sentiment as least at least what i'm seeing maybe it's just also because of the fact that it's 
pretty much uh, for the for the majority of people playing, it's it's summer season here in um, in Europe, and everybody's pretty much going on on holidays. So maybe people are less complaining. But I feel like more less people are complaining. More were complaining when we had the Golden Necker Aaron Dyke medal, when everybody was just like pitchforks ready. And uh, for this one, I feel like. Of course, people are complaining about Renfrey. There's a lot of memes. There's a lot of posts on Reddit and stuff like that. But it's kind of, you know, um, you know, there there is ways to kind of also outplay it, play around it and stuff like that. If you if you know that your opponent is is, is packing Renfrey in the deck, which a lot of them are, because like you said, it's just it's just a lot of easy points uh, coming out of that. But yeah, there will be there will be changes to Renfrey. Um, patch notes go out on Monday. And yep. also we have a developer video with uh, Jean and Ryan. So talking about the changes. And I think if I remember correctly, that Renfrey for sure is, is, is on the list, uh, on the nerf list. So there will be some changes. Hopefully, um, you know, hopefully the meta stabilizes uh, after this update and we'll see what players are kind of thinking about it. I already know the, the the devs are working on the on the next update and some changes for that. So uh, can't, can't wait for for more cool changes. Yeah, because there's some some cool stuff down, down the line. You know, every time there's, a, like, at the end of the season, yes, it starts to get a little stale, especially, you know, playing in 2,500 plus, it's yeah. the same decks. Yeah. But I have had this conversation with others. I personally, for a competitive reason, I like when the meta is quite narrow because mm -hmm. it feels more like a game of chess. I know yeah. what to expect. It's not like I'm going in blind. Um, I feel like last Most season when it was non-competitive, there was just some random stuff on the ladder. <laughs> and I'm like, I have yeah. no idea what's going on. But I prefer when the, the, the meta is kind of narrow. I know some people don't enjoy that. I, I guess it depends what you play the game for. You know, some yeah. people like to play the game for fun and they want to uh, get pull off their crazy combos with the crazy cards. And I totally understand, um, you know, yeah. why they don't like narrow metas. But um, for, you know, for a competitive level, it's... A little bit easier if the the meta is a little narrow and you know what your opponent is going to play you know it's going to be ren free if you see syndicate it's going to be some sort of golden echo poison package so yeah, yeah. i think um, it's, yeah. it's a question of variety like some there are players that like a lot of variety in terms of like decks that you can play within a faction and there are some that like the meta to be kind of more narrower so you pretty much are seeing like the best decks for a given faction the the most optimized versions of them kind of go in uh, and you can pretty much see it also on the competitive scene like whenever we have an event that is tied to to one of the patches and the, the season you kind of are seeing uh, a pattern in terms of what the players are bringing there are of course exceptions like magpie for example bringing something crazy uh, the famous magpiles and stuff like that but i feel like a lot of decks the core is pretty much being set and being the same and I also feel like it's it's unavoidable in any card game that I play. There are like staples that are within a given faction or deck or archetype, and they are always pretty much, you know, stuck there. And you either run it or you don't run it. And you also learn how you play around it once the meta kind of stabilizes and becomes more stale by the end of the month. And also us doing monthly updates is something that you know, is, 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 I feel like in some sense unique to card games. And I think it's easier to do with a online, uh, card game than for example, doing it for, for like a paper one. So it's, it's, it's also all these things kind of fall into it. Yeah. And I, every monthly update, obviously it makes the game fresh, but for me personally, it's like, oh, I have to relearn all this stuff again, because it's like playing a new card game. Cause you know, something else will come out that like you know it, it could just be one change to a card yep. and it'll fall out of the meta and then we have to figure out okay what's the most optimal deck you know that and that's why the the, the meta is like kind of well there's no meta in the first week it's basically people yeah. are running these crazy piles trying people to figure are trying out you know, different stuff right it's really cool they're like oh can we make this work again and then one week later it's like no we can't make this work. Yeah. <laughs> like it's still not good shinmiri comes so out with always... a couple lists uh beginning first week and everybody's testing them like switching cards around for that list trying to see if it actually will work but yeah it's like i've seen like Sealy also doing cool stuff in the beginning uh, of of every season like of course shinmiri and also other other people are just kind of like putting putting a lot of stuff together sharing it with the community before like the day when the patch hits they're like already coming out with really cool 
text and ideas. So yeah, it's it's really cool that I I love the community aspect, of course. Uh, for it, I'm not only saying because of me working as a community manager mainly, but seeing this community being so tight knit and everybody is friends with one one another is just incredible. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that's what's kept me around. I didn't expect to be streaming. I just had my one year anniversary on Twitch uh, last Congrats. month and I did not. Thank you. Yeah, I did not expect to last this long. I honestly thought it was just something I was going to do for fun. Um, and then now it's just become something that I'm so used to doing almost every day. Um, obviously, I stream uh, the morning of Euro European. So I, yeah. I think people expect me to be like the morning show almost because <laughs> everyone's like, I've got my coffee. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, it's definitely, um, yeah, it's just something that I've really enjoyed. Um, I have my own business um, on the side as well. That was actually my, it still is, but it's my full-time job. Yeah. Um, I've been doing that for six years. But um, yeah, I think for me, it's just uh, the the video game thing and streaming has definitely been like a new passion of mine. So it's something I really do truly enjoy. Yeah, you're you're the founder of Bar K Skin, if I pronounce that yeah. uh, properly. So that's, that's really awesome. So it's really awesome. To, but I feel like it's also a lot of work to to run your own business because that that must oh be yeah it's yeah so i started in 2015 it was just a uh, side hustle at the time i used to be a flight attendant actually so it was a, a side hustle of mine yeah um but i could be here all, all day and tell you how, like what i did to try and grow it but i tried everything under the sun i i did a business degree back at university mm -hmm. And yeah, if, if I know I sometimes I get the odd question from people asking like business tips and all that kind of stuff. But That's really cool. My biggest, yeah, my biggest tip would probably just to start because yeah. I think people get to. Because that's what doesn't get people like going. Like they, they're afraid to actually take the step, right? Because yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a, the same it's an with investment. streaming though. Yeah. yeah. You know, people are just like, oh, I need the perfect setup or I need the perfect, you know, I just no. need to, you know, I need more times when I, you know, like. No, you just have to start, even if it's just... I started off with one product, okay? One product that I was making at home in my kitchen. Uh, it's just, um, and I just grew from there. You know, I just put on Instagram. I had zero followers. I had no yeah. following on Instagram whatsoever. Uh, and I just, you know, like basically just hustled. Like I would go and show it to anyone that would listen. And um, yeah, my first big retailer was Urban Outfitters in the US. That was my awesome. first big one. I don't know how because, you know, I was still very tiny when they mm -hmm. approached me. I actually, they actually approached me. So it's funny because now I approach retailers and they said, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, Urban Outfitters uh, approached me and they said, yeah, we'd love to have your product. So um, it was mostly just online, but it was actually stocked in a couple of stores mm -hmm. across Hawaii and Puerto Rico. So I was, that was like probably one of my biggest moments with my business. But my, yeah, my biggest tip, even if it's streaming, you know, if it's just anything, it. just, just start and then just, you could yeah. figure it out along the way. Even the, the streaming stuff, you know, I just figured it out along the way. You know, I had problems with my audio on my first stream and I, you know, I had people being like so nice and yeah. polite, but they were like, oh, by the way, your audio isn't so good. And I listened back to it. I was like, oh God, it was terrible. Why'd you guys <laughs> stick around? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Audio, audio is a, is a, is, is a must. And I think it's one of the number one tips that everyone gives to content creators on, on, on whenever you're doing online, like when it comes to like visuals, it's, it's okay. Like you don't need to have like a top notch, like, um, you know, DSLR camera and stuff like that. But when it comes to audio, make sure your audio is really good because if it's something that people can't listen to and if they're on like on headphones, they will instantly just, you know, shut it off and go to something different. So audio, audio is, is, is key here. Yeah. It's really cool. They have a, they, they have your own business and, and also that everything is uh, coconut oil based. Uh, so that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty nice. It's also probably like organic and, and stuff like that. Right. So that was, since you were starting it in your kitchen and making it by yourself. So I, I assume it was just like organic stuff in there. It definitely was. I, I and I look back at in hindsight, I'm thinking, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> but you know, we all have to start from somewhere. Yeah. Um, I remember taking the product finally when we got to the level that 
you know, we needed a manufacturer. I took it to the manufacturer and he's like, oh, you did a good job for someone that doesn't have, you know, a background in chemistry or yeah, anything. Yeah, I was going to ask, do you have a background in chemistry? That was my next no, well, question. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think sometimes I look back as well with the experience I have now, um, sometimes being naive can be a benefit sometimes because uh -huh. like you just you don't know so you haven't had anything disappoint you yet or you know you don't know how hard it is yet so you just you know a bit more optimistic and yeah uh, that's why i just say to people just start because you can just figure it out and if the worst case scenario what do you got to lose um just you know go back to whatever you were doing before um but you can always just start small like i think sometimes people have this conception that businesses need to start off with a big bang and yeah of course the thing is like and I always try to explain this to people uh the the articles you read in the media obviously love that overnight story or yeah. like that business that got the the most amount of funding from this like you know uh famous venture capitalist and of course they want to write about that because that's what gets clicks and people want to read about that but you know sometimes sometimes some of these yeah, some of these businesses don't start off like that. Some businesses took took ages before they became an overnight success and yeah. they started off small. Um, so it's just something that you can, yeah, just, just start and go from there. Yeah, it's also something that not a lot of people talk about and also like headlines and media, they, 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 they kind of avoid it, but there's a lot of pretty much, you know, blood, sweat and tears put into it. There's also a lot of years where someone is totally off the radar and then one day they become, you know, known and that's when the whole thing kind of kicks off. Just either either by having a collaboration with another brand which is bigger or someone famous or, you know, just uh, even in, in today's world, just I don't know, a YouTuber or someone like picks up one of your products and shows it off. And then you see like sales instantly going up because it's someone that is, you know, well known, um, not even talking about. That's like, actually, yeah, that's happened to my brand a couple of times. Like we had um, like, I guess, celebrities uh, post it on their Instagram. And I'm thinking, that's how awesome. where are all these sales coming from? And then <laughs> I've had to like find out where it's from, you know, I'm like, where's all this traffic? Like one time we were getting all this traffic from the UK and not getting all these sales of a particular product. And I was yeah. like, where are these all coming from? And then I realized that there was this, uh, I think she was on Love Island or something. Mm -hmm. And she's she was telling like her Twitter followers that because someone asked her, oh, how do you? <laughs> yeah she, they were like how is your skin so nice on love island and she was like oh, i was using this brand from australia called boris kai skin i was using the bronze shimmering nice. body oil she and that, we didn't pay her she just you know used the product Naturally, she liked organic. it she told people <laughs> yeah so that was um that was you never know who's looking like yeah. uh, and now instagram wasn't big at all it was like less than 10k at the time and uh yeah you just never know who's looking yeah yeah, I, I feel like I totally agree. The same goes for, for the streaming aspect of it. Like if you want to try, you should totally, like if you want to pursue it, like just do it. Don't think about um, quality at the beginning and also don't don't get discouraged by the amounts of viewers because I think a lot of people get discouraged like, oh, I'll be streaming for like one person or two people. But, you know, if I had the same feel yeah, though, <laughs> if you're consistent, and if you're doing it all the time, people will come for your personality. They will come for anything that you're pretty much, you know, introducing and and also it's really cool when you're learning the game you have people more experienced come into chat and actually tell you like what you should be doing and how you should be playing that was exactly yeah. like my first few streams i remember in the first week i had a few people come in and tell me you know this is how you should be playing and this is why this is how i got to pro rank so quickly within the week because people yeah. were teaching me basically how to play gwen because i had no idea what i was doing um but uh i think also streaming is also like kind of like running a business like um you know i was working in beauty and e-commerce before mm -hmm. um and which is a very different industry to i'm learning a lot about you know the video game industry and it's a totally different world um but uh there's a, a few similarities with streaming and running your own business i mean streaming is kind of like it running a, a business. business anyway yeah because you know you nothing the one thing with streaming is community and that's the same with business too mm -hmm. because you want to try and like it was a, that our instagram was about trying to build a community and you know streaming is exactly the same thing you know people want someone they can relate to someone they can have a good time with and it was it's the same with business right so um i felt i could translate a lot of that into my streaming um it's also been helpful in terms of you know as being a content creator 
um, what kind of opportunities are available. I think some content creators don't realize there's quite a few opportunities yeah. out there. You just have to kind of put yourself out there though you know you have to email people you have to message people you have to network and yeah. it's just part get, of it get your um, foot in the door pretty much and like hey i'm here by the way sponsor me or something yeah or let's, i think that was think the same with collaboration or something like that yeah yeah i mean i as i mentioned to you before off stream i didn't wasn't in the video game world at all um until the pandemic definitely not in the gwent world either you know some streamers that we've had um started streaming but they've been known in the community i wasn't like that at all like i had just signed up with a different username i'm not the username i'm using now mm -hmm. and uh i wasn't known in the community yet so i definitely had to you know make myself known like i would say hi to all the streamers at the start um when i started not to promote my own but just to be engaged with the community and see what the community was like but that's just how you do it, you know, and that's why people came to my streams because they're like, oh, I, I remember you in my stream. And then they'd raid me like I remember yeah. Dili and Shinmiri raided me. That really started my stream. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just like getting your foot in the door. Yeah. And I, I love raiding on um, on Twitch. It's really cool because, yeah, you can pretty much get more viewers to, to people that you enjoy yourself watching and also some people who are starting off like they're not as visible to the majority of the people that are watching people like like you said Shinmiri like he has a pretty big following due to the fact that he's very analytical he can you know break up a meta into bits and pieces and kind of you know people come in there for for, for the knowledge and stuff like that but also I feel like if someone's starting off, they're not maybe as knowledgeable with the game, but later they grow, 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 and they become better at it. So, and also they bring a different personality. And I think that's what, that's what people enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely not a good deck builder. I've, I've established that. Um, Me I neither. try to, <laughs> yeah, I try to, I, I, I've been listening to your, um, the Fleurs of podcast. Mm -hmm. I am. Not when they come out, but like, you know, when I have time, I'll go back to the episodes. Yeah. And I remember there was one um, episode you guys spoke about, you know, um, deck builders, like, you know, the Shinmiris and the Spessies and, you know, some, and I, oh, it was about net decking, you know, like, why do people consider it such a bad thing? And I, look, I always tell people in my stream, I'm like, I'm a net decker. Like I yeah. sometimes build my decks and, but I net deck and I normally just change a few cards that will mm -hmm. like suit me. Mm -hmm. But it's just because if I try to build a deck, it's not good you know and as you said in the podcast if you can just take something that's good and save yourself time why yeah. not and i'm why exactly not? the same i'm just trying to be efficient that's what everybody does that's what everybody does yeah. I, i've also noticed like for 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 all the card games that i pay like play throughout my life for for every one of them always someone is copying someone like now we just have access to it in a, in a like a broader uh state because we just go online we google what we want and and then we get like you know top eight decks that played in a in a recent tournament and you get everything there or you have people creating content creating like deck guides and stuff like that that's also really cool because you know you're watching the like the content of these people thanks to this they get money out of it so it's like a whole thing that you know thrives and keeps on going so why not use this instead of you know, sit there and try to become, you know, like a, like a deck builder, like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll add this, I'll change this. Of course, I feel like also that is something that we mentioned in that podcast is like, whenever you get to a point where you know the cards like super well, and you know the archetype that you're playing, you're able to pretty much shift things around and kind of put in cards that you know that are going to work for you. But like the engine package or like the, the most important crucial cards that are kind of the core of the deck, will they will kind of stay there, right? Yeah, I just and I just know that I'm not a, like I've tried. Maybe one day I'll be good at you know analyzing and going. Okay, we need this, this, and this, and this. But now I'm happy to just let yeah. the the experts do do the uh do the work. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think about um because you mentioned that of course you're very competitive. Did you ever think about things like working on the other side of the like esports scene? Did you ever think about casting or anything like that? I definitely have. So I've already, um, so I've, you know, spoken to a few people and said, mm -hmm. you know, if you ever do a tournament, I'm happy to cast. I okay. wouldn't say I'm a bad speaker either. Um, I've done some media training for, for my business. I yeah. do a lot of interviews, podcasts, TV shows and stuff like that. So I have done that sort of stuff before. But yeah, I'm very keen. 
Um, I haven't done one before, so um, I am very keen. I think that's probably the next step in my, I guess, content creation mm -hmm. career, I think. Yeah. Um, I've always been keen on, on being a caster, but I think I would love to practice at some community stuff and then go from there and really improve my skills on that. So I don't know how I, I would go yet because I haven't done it, but <laughs> yeah, I think that's the next step. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's it's a grind, and uh, I feel like, you know, with you getting to know the game better and better and better and better, and being a person that can easily play um, at the top of, of pro rank, and you know, you have these ambitions plus you're competitive. I feel like it's going to be easy for you to uh, map out the plays or kind of understand what people are bringing. And what's also really cool is like whenever casters, whenever they prepare for, for a cast, uh, before, like they have access to the decks a little bit earlier than when we kind of post them to the public. So they're able to, um, you know, analyze them, uh, discuss them between one another and kind of, you know, based off of that plan, like what they're gonna, what they can expect, what the plays are going to be more or less who's targeting who, who has brought like, hey, for, for which deck. And it's like, it makes the work much easier, but then it's just also, you know, it's the fact of that you are there pretty much casting matches, which take quite some time. So it's like, you know, you need to be, you need to be always talking, always uh, figuring out the place. So that's, that's kind of the, the hard thing to kind of keep the, keep the ball rolling all the time. But I feel like you, you wouldn't have a problem with that. Oh, thank you. That means yeah. a lot. Yeah. Plus, uh, I feel like the, the the accent that you have is, is is really cool, and I think it always brings a lot of variety to, um, <laughs> to 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 any cast. So so totally like I would I would try that, check that out, and then who knows? Maybe in the future we could do some you know some qualifiers and stuff like that. Who knows? Who knows what's what is who down knows? the road? Yeah, we yeah. have to watch this space. Yeah, I'd definitely yeah. be keen. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I do get a lot of compliments on the accent. I think because it's you know it's just Australian. And yeah, Australia is really cool. Yeah, I think because, you know, as we mentioned, um, as we spoke about on off, off the stream, you know, there's not a lot of Australians in the Gwent scene. Um, it's a lot of Europeans, yeah. you know, there's a lot of North Americans as well, but rarely any Australians, um, yeah. and especially female Australians. I don't know any of female Australian Gwent Me neither. streamers. Me neither. Sorry. To be honest, I, yeah. I also don't. I also don't. Yeah, like like you said, there's there's really not a lot of people uh, from Australia. So that even makes, like I said, also in the beginning, it's really cool to have uh, people from just different parts of the world playing the game. Because for us, it's always it's always super exciting. Because we're like, oh my god, we have, you know, we have people like creating content from from this part of the world and this part of the world. It's always it's always really cool to see. Yeah, awesome. it would have been. Uh would have been interesting for you guys being like, oh, there's an Australian, like you're playing Gwent, you know, because it's, it's no, literally on the more, other side of the world. We have more Australians, like, but when it comes to like the aspect of, you know, creating content or, or being like a, like a, because I treat people who are streaming it, like there are, there are faces for the game to, to, to some extent in a given region or just, just on Twitch and they're building their following. So these are people that we as let's say the wider community see but also like looking into statistics there are people from australia playing the game so it's like you know that the numbers are there but you don't see like the prominent faces of that um of, of that region coming out it's funny because i i went to a um i went to a like a esports bar i think it maybe a couple of months ago yeah. and uh i got to i got to know a few people there and they hadn't heard of gwent actually i would because they would ask me, oh, you know what do you stream on twitch and i tell them oh gwent um, they're like, oh yeah, I've played that before, but it was always, they said they played it when, you know, um, when it first came out. Yeah. Um, better, and I didn't play times. it when it first, yeah, yeah. And I didn't play it when, obviously when it came out. So I don't know any, but all I know is now, you know, and, yeah. uh, Good. they, they Good. would, I always try to get them back into, I'm like, you should play again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like yeah. there were, because of all the changes that were happening, um, after beta and after the whole like midwinter and homecoming updates, so where we kind of shifted the game a lot and changed a lot of things in it, a lot of people just bounced off because they couldn't keep up with the changes at that, at the moment. So whoever joined the game at a later state pretty much enjoys this a, a little bit better because they don't have, they're not tainted by the, like the past and how the game used to look like back then. So yeah, I, I, I totally feel so. And I also feel like the game right now is in a very, very good state, like much better than whatever we had like a year ago and stuff like that. Mainly thankful, like thanks thanks to Jason Slaman, kind of what, what the work he put in into the game. 
um, after we did the whole like um, you know homecoming update. But after that, I feel like we really brought it up to a place where it's 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 in a good place right now. Yeah, I'm definitely one of those because obviously I started playing early last year, so I'm one of those players that. You know, I don't know what it was like before because I, you know, sometimes in the stream, people ask me how long you've been playing. I miss, you know, when it had the free rows and yeah. and I'm like, well, I don't because I never experienced that. Like, I only know what we have now. So, yeah. um, you know, when I first started playing, I think Vi was better. And then I think yeah. Ball was better as well, where you could proc Ball even yeah. if you played Roderick and Yoakim on the other side so I remember like people playing that people are not happy 50. about that <laughs> yeah then I remember then it got changed and it yeah. felt a little bit better but yeah um, definitely when the Yoakim would proc I was like god yeah. damn like you can't really stop this can yeah. you yeah once it started yeah. going it was like uh, wasn't wasn't too good nice nice um, okay I think I think we're almost into an hour so I feel like uh, we have everything that we wanted to cover. Um, where can people find you in terms of like uh, your content? So you're mainly and only on Twitch for now. Yes. Yes, I um I know I should try YouTube, but I feel like I just don't have time for YouTube. YouTube yeah. is like you know you have to edit the video, yeah. <laughs> whereas Twitch I just turn it on and I play and I just talk and and I can talk a lot. So, um, but yes, as you, as um you mentioned, I, you can find me on Twitch. So it's Emil J E M I W -L, L E J, mm -hmm. and I stream most days. So if you're in Europe, it's your morning. Um, if you're in Australia, it's afternoons. And if you're in North America, it's very late evening for you. So we have uh, quite a few night owls in there as well. Yeah. And and then, yeah, I'm just on Twitter. So you can find me on there as well. Um, my DMs are open. You guys can always just ask. You know, if you want to ask about Gwent, um, you know, like what, I don't know, like what kind of decks you think you want to know tips off, I'm, I'm always, um, my DMs are always open. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for joining me on Twig. Um, really appreciate it. And also thank you for doing it at such a such a late hour in your time zone. Um, we always try to keep this up for but I'm happy that you, you know, uh, you, you made the journey here. So, so thank you for coming over. Oh, you know, it was no trouble at all. As I said, I was out anyway. It's a Friday night. Yeah. So. <laughs> with friends for dinner i was like i gotta go now i'm gonna i'm gonna um be on twig they're like huh what's that <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no thank you so much for having me it's been an absolute pleasure, pleasure. and yeah it's such an honor to be on twig i i've tried i try to catch it if i'm awake but and um, i always enjoy it so thank you so much easy we'll be on youtube so everybody who hasn't seen it um here live will be able to to watch it on youtube Emil, thank you. Yeah. Was was amazing to talk to you. Hopefully, uh, we get to pursue some maybe esports stuff in the future. But yeah, good luck with the yeah. grind and the climb. And uh, hopefully, we can either see you on one of our tournaments, either on the player side or on the caster side. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Have an awesome weekend. Yeah, you too. See ya. Take care. Bye. Bye.